Good morning. Today is October 30th. It is a Monday. My name is Laura and I'm coming to you from Eat to Your Health with Carnivore. What I am going over today is actually about magnesium deficiency, foods that you can get the magnesium through, supplements, uh, different things just for you to more for education, stuff that I've done for myself. I am a nurse uh, 21 years, not your doctor, not a doctor, but this is stuff that I have done. And this will just give you kind of a guideline of maybe what some of your symptoms might be. If you've recently went to keto, ketovore, or carnivore, or lion, um, some of these things can happen when you're getting off of carbohydrates, um, which have been horrible on your body. There may be some of these things that you'll go through. So <clears throat> I always say, please like, share, subscribe, hit the little notification bell. That way when I go live, you'll be able to see it. Um, I'm still not able to go live from YouTube yet. One of these days, maybe we'll be able to do that. Um, I am very excited. I uh, am going to be doing uh, kind of like a YouTube podcast type thing with some ladies. Um, and we're all carnivore ladies. So that'll be coming up. I'm super excited. I can't wait. Like I'm jumping out of my skin. <clears throat> Excuse me. So some of the things I'm going to go over is 68% of the United States does not have enough magnesium. They don't have enough in their diet. They don't take enough if they aren't getting it from their diet with supplementation. Um, it's an extremely important um, vitamin that you need. You know, it is something that works very similar to like your potassium when it comes to muscle muscle contraction, heart, different things like that. Um, so magnesium is what they call a cofactor. So it is something that works with over 350 of the enzymes in your body, which is very important when you get into the cells um, because that's where your mitochondria produces ATP, which is your cell energy. Um, so this is something that's very important for that, which is why some people really feel run down. Um, I'm always like, mm, probably potassium, sodium, or magnesium. And so you always have to try those. I went through it many, many times when I was keto for 28 years, went carnivore, cleaned it up even more, um, and then went lion. And there was a couple times where I was like, oh, I think I need to take a few more of those. And I do add in some of the stuff that is very high in this. And sometimes it's not enough when you're flushing out all the junk that you've retained from the carbohydrates. I think that's where a lot of that goes. So especially in the beginning, I think these are important. So some, some of the signs that you can have, you can have cramping, twitching, especially of the eyes. Arrhythmia is where you're like, oof. Now I'm going to tell you as an old cardiac nurse, if you're having chest pain, you stand up and feel like you're going to pass out. Yes, I would always take some of your good salt and I'd put it under my tongue but if it continues for any amount of time, and I mean like two to three minutes, you need to seek medical attention and hopefully you'll have a good medical team and take somebody with you that can be a patient advocate. Um, some of the other things is you'll notice bad teeth, especially up at the gum line. You'll notice gums receding and where you can almost see like the roots, um, soft bones, insulin resistance, insomnia, increased cortisol, decreased mood, the number one thing that you're going to see is fatigue, and that can be sodium, potassium, or magnesium. So it's something that you'll have to try. You know, I always started with this to get the potassium and the sodium, and yes, this has a little magnesium, but then I would almost always be like, okay, I'm still having that. And I always had a muscle twitch when, I, when mine was getting low. Um, magnesium citrate, if you have that one, I would recommend throw her out. Throw it in the garden if you want. It's good for the soil, I guess, but I'm saying it's not the one that's probably best for you. Uh, magnesium glycinate is a very good one. Magnesium L-treonate, which is T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T-E, which is the one I use. I take that before bed, personally myself, because it does help me sleep. I'm not somebody that has insomnia, but if I watch, well, I don't even watch the news, so let's just be honest. But if I come across a section of news for four seconds, then it's in my head. And then trying to go to sleep at night is impossible because I'm mad and I'm running it over in my head. 
Um, the ones that I would only use if you have constipation issues is your magnesium oxide, magnesium hydroxide, and magnesium carbonate. That is going to be uh, something that will help with, you know, if you're having trouble in the bathroom. Um, some of the things that can block the magnesium, of course, is fructose, which is in everything package. Um, it blocks how we uh, absorb it. Table sugar, even honey can block it because it's partly fructose and alcohol. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. So some of the things that you can do to, if you want to kind of know what your levels are, yes, you can get like a CBC to check out your blood components. Um, a CMP, Complete Metabolic Panel, will give you some of these ranges. But really to know what your magnesium level is going to show you, you want to get one that shows inflammatory. So an inflammatory marker like your CRP, that's your C-reactive protein. That will, that is another clue of, oh, because my magnesium has always been normal on the, the complete metabolic panel, but I promise you I've had the twitch before. I've had the muscle that twitched, um, it was my tricep that would twitch before I even did the, you know, the exercising or anything. So the CRP though was high and it was only high up until I became carnivore. Once I switched off of keto, did away from any of the carbohydrates, even the vegetable carbohydrates, that inflammation was gone. My CRP is good, ESR, I have no inflammatory markers whatsoever. So that might be something to look at. Um, antibiotics and diuretics, of course, are very crucial when it comes to your magnesium, potassium, sodium, any of those electrolytes because of what it causes in the body. Um, fibromyalgia, um, lower leg muscle cramps, those are all things that can have, uh, can tell you that your magnesium is low. And like I said, it could be magnesium, potassium, or sodium, and you have to try those out. Um, there are things in your food, in your diet that you can eat I'm a carnivore and I'm actually lion. I did try some um, pork belly last week. Even with me doing, because I thought maybe it was like what they process the bacons with. I was like, oh, I'll just do it with my own salt, do it my way, and maybe it won't affect me. Nope, I am not. I am ruminant meat only for myself, which is fine. I don't feel like I'm deprived. I eat hamburger. I had London broil last night with ribeye fat. I'll have probably ribeyes tonight with a side of ribeye fat. I don't feel like, oh, I miss this. No, I don't. I don't miss the joint aches. I don't miss um, inflammation in my knuckles. That just drove me insane where you wake up and you're like, oh, my hands are tight. I don't have that. So you can um, get the magnesium that you need if you can convert it. So my belief, and this is just my belief, uh, is that we don't break down cellulose, so I'm not sure. They can say on a package, like, this has this much uh, beta carotene, and that's great, but I want to know what in my body can convert that to vitamin A when I can't break down the cellulose, which is what's holding that beta carotene. And maybe somebody's got a scientific thing out there that they can share with me that would change my mind. Um, I'm open to any of that. So <clears throat> men need 420 milligrams a day of magnesium. Women, we need 320. Magnesium is used to help generate energy. It reduces cramps, stress, lowers cortisol, helps with your sleep, decreases inflammation and blood sugar, helps with vitamin D absorption as K2 does. Not as good, but it does help. It, uh, let's see, the things in these vegetables that are shown to kind of block some of the magnesium, which is kind of going back to what I said, even if you could change, you know, some of these things into the, the vitamins and minerals that you need, just the oxalates from the vegetables and the, the phylates, phytates in the grains are going to block the magnesium. So, it's like eating it and knowing that it doesn't really matter because it's going to block everything. To me, that's wasted, wasted time, wasted energy. I don't want to waste my time on that kind of stuff. 
So some of the things that you could do a day, and this is sounds absolutely crazy, but this is to get you to that either 320 or the 420 milligrams a day, depending if you're a woman or a man. <clears throat> so 11 cups of bananas, that'll get you your magnesium level. That's a lot. Uh, almonds just takes five ounces, but they're extremely high in your oxalates. Now, things that you can do if you're going to try to get your magnesium this way is if you're going to have almonds is to have a little slab of butter or a little piece of cheese because that helps bind the oxalates. Same with spinach, oxalates, two and a half cups, dark chocolate, six ounces, and that's extremely high in oxalates. Um, I haven't had dark chocolate in probably two years, um, and that really has helped. Avocados would take seven cups. Fish would take 14.8 ounces. Beef, four pounds. Now, even being carnivore, I only take in about two pounds a day of ruminant meat. So I don't hit that four pound mark. So right there, I know I would be deficient. Um, bok choy, which sounds disgusting, 20 cups. Zucchini would be 20 cups to get that amount of magnesium. Eggs would be 67. Iceberg lettuce is 57. If you, I don't know anybody that could eat 57 cups of iceberg lettuce a day. Romaine, it's only 30. Kale and Swiss chard is three to five cups. So that's why I am a carnivore. Uh, for one, vegetables and me never got along. They always made my stomach feel like I was on fire. They stopped me from going to the bathroom. So the fiber is a myth in my world. Might help other people, not some for me. Um, but I don't, I wouldn't have the time, the money or the energy to put into eating that much. So I prefer to eat the animal that eats the greens and then converts it into its muscle and its meat and then I eat it. So that's how I do stuff. Um, that's just my take on it, of uh, what I've seen. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. If you want me to go over anything else, if there's some questions that you have, you always can email me. It is always attached up in my um, bio on here. And then I think I have, like I said, we have that thing coming up with some gals, uh, carnivore women that we're gonna come together and do some stuff, uh, which I'm really excited about. And then I'm going to do another video this week, probably Friday or Saturday, it'll depend. <clears throat> I've got some ex-patients that I need to, to kind of go visit with. I haven't seen them for a while and uh, see how they're doing. So anyway, that is the end of this. And I'm going to say, like I always do, meet, heat, eat, and repeat.